नमस्ते टीचर्स नमस्ते अनिल सर नमस्ते मैम नमस्ते 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 मैम सर आवे कुछ टू बिगिन विद नमस्ते मैम नमस्ते यस 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 प्लीज थैंक यू सर थैंक यू नमस्ते एवरीवन एवरी डे इज अ लर्निंग डे एवरी डे समथिंग न्यू इज डिस्कवर्ड और रीडिस्कवर्ड एक्सप्लोर्ड एंड एम्ब्रेस्ड एज सेड बाय डॉक्टर पेट्रिक we welcome each one of you to this new day where we are going to discover rediscover explore and embrace we welcome the patron of this faculty development program president of body dr anil sharma ji who has left no stone unturned to make each day for us a new learning experience and the fraternity of educators to this day 3 of faculty development program organized by shikshan bharti delhi kendra and hosted by bhavan panchkula in the yesterday's session we got our it skills sharpened under the guidance of ma'am ms renu rawat breaking the barriers and incorporating inclusion by ma'am preeti sangwan and learned mathematics through games by ma'am panna datta choudhury like yesterday i hope we all are ready to delve into the thought provoking and enriching sessions we thank anil sharma sir for bringing us all of us together on a common platform and help us learn under the motto that sharing is not only caring but learning too we thank you sir from the core of our heart no auspicious occasion can begin with the blessings of the divine the almighty May I request Miss Simple to play the prayer and begin with the day. Thank you. Matu hi Bhagwati, Matu hi Kalika, Tu hi hai Shivani Mat, Shiv ki. आराधिका मा तू ही भगवती मा तू ही कालिका तू ही है शिवानी मात शिव की आराधिका तू शिवानी तू भवानी काल रूप कालिका तू ही है शिवानी मात शिव की आराधिका मा तू ही भगवती मा तू ही कालिका तू ही ब्रह्म तू ही माया तू ही आदि बाबा राखो हमें धूप सृष्टि कारंभ तू है तू ही मां सृष्टि कांत नित नवीन रूप तेरे तू वर्णन से अतीत अग्नि भूमि वायु जल है तू ही है निहारिका मां तू ही भगवती मा तू ही कालिका मा तू ही भगवती मा तू ही कालिका मा तू ही कालिका मा तू ही कालिका आ we thank jagruti ma'am from panchkula kendra for beginning our day on such a spiritual and melodious note thank you ma'am and with permission of anil sharma sir can we begin with the proceedings of the day please please thank you sir ranjana ma'am i request you to mute your assistant thank you ma'am The session one of day three is based on inclusive education and differentiated learning by Ma'am Miss Mona Jayan Patras and Tulsi Bora. Inclusive education is about ensuring that every student, regardless of their abilities or backgrounds, 
has opportunity to learn and succeed in a supportive environment. And differentiated learning, on the other hand, is about tailoring our teaching methods to meet the diverse needs of our students, recognizing that each child learns in his or her unique way. So the first session of today will be jointly taken by the special educators from Bhavan's Mehta Vidyale, Ma'am Ms. Mona Jayant Patras and Ms. Tulsi Bora, who will show us paths to integrate inclusive education and differentiated learning strategies to create an equitable and effective educational experience for everyone. The first speaker of day, special educator with more than 21 years of experience is Ma'am Mrs. Mona Jayant Patras. She graduated from Jesus and Mary College, New Delhi and completed her B.A. in special education from Hoj University. Specializing in mental retardation and autism spectrum disorder, she earned diplomas from YMCA and Tamanna Special School. She has participated in numerous training sessions and delivered presentations on learning disability and inclusive education. Ma'am, we welcome you. We are joined by Ma'am Ms. Tulsi Bora, who has been into service from the last 20 years. Ma'am also holds a degree from Delhi University, a diploma in mental retardation from YMCA Delhi, BA from Bhoj University, and MA from IGNO, and even MSc in psychology from Madras University. She, she has done courses in elementary child education, learning disabilities, guidance okay. and counseling, and even administrative supervision. She has been training SCERT teachers and has served as NCRT resource person. Bam has even contributed to an NCRT EVS textbook for class 3, showcasing her dedication to special education. We welcome you, ma'am. The stage is all yours. We are all eager to listen from you, ma'am, Miss Mona and Tulsi. Ma'am, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Um, ma'am, I would like you to make me host so that I can share my screen. Ma'am, you can share your screen even without that. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen. Okay, let's start. Good morning, all the educators present over here. Today, we will dwell into two powerful educational approaches, inclusive education and differentiated learning. We will explore how these strategies work together to create a vibrant learning environment where every student uh, grow and thrive. So what is, in, uh, first we will start with introduction of uh, to inclusive education. Inclusive education is a transformative approach that values diversity and ensures student, regardless of their abilities, learn and thrive together in the same classroom. This approach creates a culture of acceptance where differences are celebrated and every student feel welcomed. It prioritizes equity by providing the necessary resources and support for each student to succeed and uh, recognizes the, that different students have different needs. And it also empowers students by acknowledging their strength uh, and uh, foster their confidence also. So ultimately, inclusive education promotes a supportive and equitable learning environment, benefiting both the individual student as as the broader school community too. Just. Okay, now let's uh, move to the next slide that is our defining inclusive education. 
Now, the core principle of uh, inclusive education, which is to ensure that uh, every student, uh, regardless of their background, and uh, equal has the equal chance to receive high quality education. It emphasizes education, uh, recognizes and addresses the unique learning needs of each student. By doing so, uh, it aims to create an equitable educational environment where all students can succeed and feel value. So every student feel value when they are together learning uh, in a classroom. And it develops a culture of acceptance and support within the education system also. Inclusive schools caters to the varied needs of all students uh, by offering individualized support and resources to them. These schools make accommodation to ensure that students with different abilities can access and engage with the curriculum effectively. They use, uh, they utilize the assistive devices and the adaptive devices, aids and learning and even in the participation. So the main goal of, uh, is of inclusive education is to empower every student to achieve their full potential in a supportive and inclusive educational environment. Now, these are the benefits of uh, inclusive education. First one is the academic achievement. Um, academic and, uh, achievements in this classroom fosters high academic outcomes for the student, especially, especially with, this, uh, with special needs. Uh, where they create an environment where all students learn together, uh, including the children with special needs. And even researches shows that inclusive classrooms can lead to improved academic outcomes for. And can you mute yourself? Okay. Um, this is Okay, let's start. Okay, now research is also shows that inclusive uh, classroom can lead to improved academic outcomes for all students. This is because the settings provided opportunity for differentiated instructions where teachers, teaching methods are tailored, which are designed according to the need of the varied students. Additionally, students with special needs benefit from exposure to the general classroom and curriculum and from the higher expectations placed on them in the uh, inclusive settings. So peer learning is also a very uh, crucial, plays a very crucial role uh, as students can learn from the one another and foster a collaborative learning environment that enhances understanding and academic success for everyone. Uh, next one is the social emotional development. In this uh, inclusive education uh, helps students to develop important social and emotional skill in the classroom that include a diverse abilities and background also. All students have the chance to interact with each other with their peers and uh, who have a different uh, life uh, experiences with their peers. The, this exposure helped them to be, uh, build uh, empathy as they learn to understand and appreciate the challenges and strength of others. Additionally, uh, inclusive classrooms also teach students to accept diversity and collaborate effectively. Uh, skills that are crucial for success in broader inclusive community uh, by working and learning together students cultivate a sense of belonging and mutual respect they they have respect for each other their culture where which is essential for their social and emotional development next is the inclusive society by promoting inclusivity uh, within school inclusive education help build a society uh, that values and embrace diversity. Students who experience uh, experience inclusive education are more likely to become adults who appreciate and advocate uh, for equity and inclusion. 
in in all aspects of life this education model breaks down uh, stereotypes uh, encourages students to value differences and see diversity as strength these students grow in the community as uh, the policy makers as a community members and uh, they contribute to create a more inclusive society that provide equal opportunity for all individual regardless of their backgrounds or their abilities teacher collaboration which is very important for all of us in an inclusive education setting collaboration among teacher is very crucial very important teacher often work together to plan and implement instructional strategies that meet the diverse needs of the student the collaborative approach allows teachers to share their best practices resources their ideas and enhance the overall quality of the education uh, in this uh, inclusive uh, teachers collaboration special teacher uh, special educators general teachers uh, educators and the support staffs uh, can pull in their expertise and uh, create a more effective learning environment experience through teamwork teachers uh, can provide comprehensive uh, support to all student ensuring that every child's unique needs are met so every child's uh, need we have to cater this collaborative culture not only benefits students um, but also fosters professional growth and development among the educators this is also for the teachers to for their growth also over to you tulsi ma'am Tulsi ma'am unmute yourself oh, sorry uh okay as per nep 2020 all for learners for all learners if the mission is education for all the goal is to include all so together equitable and inclusive education strives to what it strives to reduce achievement gaps the gaps which we find within the students in a classroom how can we do how can we reduce the gaps by addressing the root cause of the educational disparities which are there such as the socio economic in inequality and in the discrimination uh just a second uh, i'll just start my video yeah okay so how how can we reduce the achievement gaps is like uh, by addressing the root cause of educational disparity such as the socio economic inequality discrimination and inadequate support system so obviously when we'll work on these factors there uh, will be uh, successful in reducing the achievement gaps which are there and ensuring that all students must get the opportunity to succeed and participate fully in society to foster a sense of belongingness is another factor how can we do that is just by helping all our students to feel that they are an integral part of the school community ultimately equitable and inclusive education is all about providing every student with the opportunities and support they need to thrive while celebrating and respecting the diverse identity and experiences that they bring to the learning environment next we come to the uh, challenges and opportunity ma'am next slide please well just the way there are always responsibilities associated with the rights we all know that right so there are challenges and opportunities which are associated with the benefits of inclusive education we keep on saying every time that there are It, there there's a lot of benefit that we get uh, out of the inclusive education but it's not that easy so always whenever we are getting we are landing up to any benefit of the inclusive education there are certain challenges which every teacher uh, faces and uh, 
of course to overcome those challenges we have the opportunities that we should uh, understand so let's have a look at it first of all all mainstream schools are required to become capable of educating all children in their local communities right so the challenges associated with this prerequisite this is a prerequisite of the benefit that we can get out of the inclusive education right so the challenges here are infrastructure upgradation which is required to accommodate diverse learners training existing staff to meet inclusive education standards and then ensuring availability of resources and assistive devices that mona ma'am has just uh, briefed about it so how can we overcome these challenges there might be some opportunities that we can grab into building a more equitable education system and then fostering a community centric approach to education and encouraging collaboration between schools and local communities are the opportunities by which we can of course uh, overcome the challenges which come in the way of the inclusive education so basically opportunities here are telling us the gateway to overcome the said challenges again there will be still challenges that would require a mindful brainstorming and strategic implementation of the planning that we do for our classrooms next comes the barrier free access to education for all children across all stages so the challenges are physical barriers in school buildings that uh, many of the school buildings are still having these barriers in the uh, for the accessibility of children with special needs and limited availability of accessible learning material and financial constraints in implementing necessary changes so there might be several changes which we are suggested to but then again the financial constraints are also there for every school uh, more or less every school might be facing this so the opportunities that comes for our rescue are uh, promoting universal design principles in school infrastructure that of course is Uh, required to be implemented at the time of uh, when we are starting we are beginning or planning for the such infrastructure of, of the school ensuring every child can participate fully in school life whatever is the program we should try to incorporate we should try to take let them participate as much as they can and creating a model for inclusive education that can be replicated so we should continuously keep on replicating that system next comes addressing diverse needs of learners in all school activities including arts sport and vocational training the challenges here are lack of specialized staff for diverse educational activities we of course need the specialized staff to be there inadequate funding for inclusive extracurricular programs because again when we conduct some extracurricular activities that require the funds required sufficient funds then resistance to change from traditional educational practices so the opportunities to overcome these challenges i think student engagement and holistic development celebrating time sorry to interrupt ma'am githika ma'am githika ma'am githika ma'am githika ma'am your request to mute okay githika ma'am you are muted ma'am 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 implementing the this Yeah. benefits that we are talking about and need for continuous training for teachers are uh, on new technology and ensuring equitable access to technology for all students so uh, these days this is the need of the hour that we can give equal opportunity to the students as well to access the technology whatever is required for their learning 
and the opportunities are leveraging technology to bridge learning gaps innovating teaching practices with digital tools we should include more of the digital tools while uh, planning our lessons and enhancing learning outcomes for all students next comes the eliminating uh, social exclusion due to attitudes and responses to diversity in race social class ethnicity and the language gender and ability so the challenges here again are deep rooted societal biases which are there and prejudices which we have seen in the society and lack of awareness and sensitivity among educators and students and also the difficulty in changing established school culture once it is set up we uh, we don't want to come out of our comfort zone so these are the, these are some of the challenges and of course there are opportunities associated to it in order to overcome so somewhat we through the challenges can be like uh, promoting social cohesion and empathy within the school community creating inclusive policies and practices that celebrate diversity and uh, developing global citizens who value and respect their differences then comes the uh, develop teacher competencies and skills that every school is doing these days so challenges here are providing continuous professional development for teachers integrating new teaching methodologies into existing curricula which is there and ensuring teacher um, teacher buy in and enthusiasm for professional growth has some of the challenges that uh, are there in the path of the inclusive education and of course the we'll talk about the opportunities can be seen in enhancing the quality of education through skilled teachers promoting lifelong learning and professional development that most of us are continuously doing that and building a community of educators committed to inclusive education and then next comes the develop to develop evidence based practices right like uh, what we say measure what we value rather than valuing what we can measure right so challenges here are shifting focus from standardized testing to holistic assessment developing new metrics and tools for evaluation because no uh, we can always we always say that uh, one size doesn't fit all so ensuring consistency and reliability in new assessment practices and how can we overcome this by creating a more meaningful assessment system encouraging deeper learning and critical thinking and aligning evaluation with educational values and goals that goes hand in hand and next comes create a system of teaching and learning that is competency based instead of content based so yes there is a paradigm shift in this uh, regard we all are now talking about the competency based uh, teaching learning process rather than the content based that we were doing earlier the challenges here are overhauling current curricula and teaching methods and training teachers to adopt competency based education balancing competency based learning with required content standards of course we cannot you know alter the content which we are taking to our classrooms in order to teach the content so obviously we need to balance out the content should be there the quality should be there again um, we should take a step ahead by incorporating more competency based learning in our lesson plans so the opportunities can be discovered in focusing on student skills and real world application we will really focus more on the skills and the real world application of course will be able to overcome all these challenges which are coming in our way and personalizing learning experiences for better outcomes preparing students for future challenges with relevant competencies are some of the opportunities where we can dive in and help uh, ourselves in the classroom and create an educational culture of collaboration and encourage that encourages and supports problem solving challenges can be found in fostering a collaborative mindset among students and teachers uh, that because we all are now talking about the collaborative learning so we need to foster this collaborative mindset amongst our students in the classroom while working or doing any assignment in the classroom providing opportunities and resources for collaborative learning more of the collaborative learning more of the uh, you know group activities more of the flex and there should be flexibility in the grouping as well so uh, the more we will incorporate such 
uh, activities in our uh, daily classroom the more will be able to you know foster all these uh, mindset within the students also overcoming competitive attitudes in traditional educational settings which were there earlier and now we of course most of the teachers and we all are even in fact trying to overcome all these barriers which are there and opportunities can again be found in promoting team work and collaborative um, activities and collective problem solving that we just talked about enhancing student engagement and motivation and then building a supportive and innovative educational community so of course that will not happen in one day uh, it will take time but then again gradually we all can shift our teaching strategies in that direction and uh, next is establish school cluster to develop consensus around inclusive values within school community so i'm sure most of our schools are working already working in the Uh, direction of the hubs of learning we all have created um, hubs of learning wherein so many schools are coming all together and they are sharing their best resources and um, practices which are going on in these schools with the other schools so that our students uh, actually the society in large will be uh, benefited it the, the resources the valuable things which are there in one school will be shared by other schools as well and the Uh, mass level uh, participation will be there and this is how the society at large will get benefited with all the resources which are there in the school and um, and share resources and best practices among schools is already we have discussed built a network of uh, support for inclusive education that we require to collaborate among the teachers the main school teacher the special education the psychologist of the school and all of our other stakeholders we all can you know keep everybody in the loop and then discuss about the challenges uh, if we are facing any about any uh, student and plan the lessons for the student and in this way we can overcome all such challenges which are there and uh, uh, enjoy the inclusivity in this school inclusive curriculum and school culture is another factor wherein we provide an inclusive curriculum that is value oriented and responsive to cultural and linguistic diversity here the challenges which can be seen are designing curricula that reflect diverse culture and languages then training teachers to deliver culturally responsive education and overcoming resistance to curriculum changes these all are the challenges which are there for a teacher in an inclusive classroom and of course the opportunities which are associated with that we can which we can grab in order to overcome these challenges are to celebrate and respect culture and linguistic diversity which are seen especially when we are living in such a country which is known for its diversity so you know, we can always um, celebrate and respect the culture and the linguistic diversity which is there in our country enhance student engagement and relevant and relatable content and fostering an inclusive and accepting learning environment is all uh, other different ways through which we can you know overcome the challenges which are um, coming in the way and creating learning environments that embrace diversity a positive environment that responds to the needs of learners beyond academics there are certain challenges uh, such as addressing the diverse social emotional needs of these students then provide adequate supports services and resources which are available in the school and ensuring inclusivity in all aspect of school life and the opportunities to overcome such challenges can be like when we create uh, educational experiences holistic educational experience other and then support the overall well-being of these students and should always keep in mind the overall well-being the mental and the physical health of the child is again very important and which is coming out to be one of the very important factor in nap 2020 and building up a positive and nurturing school climate is one of the foremost requirement when we have a positive and nurturing school environment the learning obviously will the graph of the learning will definitely uh, drive <laughs> next create an inclusive school culture with the support of inclusive teachers social workers and counselors the challenge can be recruiting and retaining trained inclusive uh, 
education professional to, to retain such qualified teachers and train teachers and so that they can even further uh, educate and train other teachers in the school that is one of the foremost requirement here and integrating support services seamlessly into the school environment and ensuring ongoing professional development and support in this regard are some of the challenges which are there and uh, opportunities which we can see are to provide comprehensive support for all student whatever type of student is there in the class we should always be able to provide comprehensive support to all our students and promote mental health and well-being within the school community that is of course i have just talked about that the well-being the mental and the physical health of a child is very important when a child is coming to the school for the for the um, with the goal and uh, objective of learning something acquiring some skill for that his physical and mental well-being is the foremost uh, prerequisite and building a strong foundation for inclusive education practices are some of the opportunities where i think we all can uh, grab such opportunities and dive in and work hard and in order to make our school a completely inclusive one this is all what we feel and uh, yes now over to you monama okay next is a topic on uh, assistive technologies in inclusive education um, which provides customized support that enables student with diverse learning needs uh, to participate fully and independently in the classroom there are several assistive devices technologies that are helpful for these students like enhancing their accessibility so the software is uh, text to speech which helps the student to uh, Uh, with visual impairment or reading difficulty students having reading difficulty by converting the written text into the spoken words and the other one is the speech to text software that uh, assists the students with the written, uh, writing difficulties by uh, transcribing spoken words into the written text so these uh, softwares are there for their students having learning difficulties the other one is the fel- facilitating communication that is aac argumentative and alternative communication that supports to students with speech or communication disorder by providing alternative way to express themselves and then there is another one that is the communication board uh, that helps allow the non verbal students to communicate uh, their needs and uh, thoughts effectively there are supporting uh, learning and comprehension apps also like educational software and apps uh, that offers in interactive and engaging learning experiences that are tailored to individual learning styles and uh, their pace according to their paces then multimedia tools like uh, we use videos then animation is a very good thing the, they are the visual learners for them and interactive stimulation to enhance their understanding of the complex uh, concept for the complex um, uh, uh, concept we can use the videos and animation now uh, mobility aid is another one such a, as adapted keyboards and mics uh, which enables uh, the physically disabled student to use computer and other devices independently so for these challenges there are mobility aids also then furnitures also can be adaptive and equipment to ensure that physical accessibility is and comfort in in their learning environment so there are customized learning experiences like uh, adapt content and assessment to meet the specific needs of each student and provide accessible and flexible learning options that caters to diverse uh, abilities um then is the whiteboard interactive whiteboard which we have also used in zoom that facilitate collaborative learning and allow student to ensure with the engage with the content dynamically then is the visual reality and argumentative reality which create immense learning experience that can be beneficial for students um with attention and sensory processing issues so student having attention and sensory processing we can use the visual reality and the argumentative reality ar we call that by incorporating these assistive technologies in inclusive education 
on creating more uh, equitable learning environment where all students have opportunity to succeed and feel empowered by all these uh, assistive technologies, by using all these as devices, aids, and software, they feel empowered. These children feel empowered. They feel independent by doing so. All right. So strategies for inclusive classroom. What are the various strategies that we can follow in an inclusive classroom? Right. So uh, the different strategies which are given here are the universal design of learning. Then second is the collaborative teaching. And then third given here is the in differentiated instructions. These are actually the entire inclusive classroom revolves around these three uh, uh, strategies which are given here. Let us understand what are universal design for learning, what are collaborative teaching and what are differentiated instruction. I'm sure everyone, we all are doing this. This we are uh, revising uh, whatever we are doing here in the classroom. We are just revising it. Universal design for learning and in short form we just say UDL uh, provides flexibility in the ways information is presented. The way students respond or demonstrate their knowledge and skills and the way students are engaged. This universal design for learning is all about that. This flexibility allows teachers to accommodate a wide range of learners, including those with disabilities and those from diverse backgrounds. Because nowadays, we are not only having, we are having a diverse classroom with diverse learners, wherein it is not about the sense. It is not only about the special education need children. It is more about the ED, EWS also. It is more about those uh, uh, students who are those children who are coming from a disturbed family. And uh, even the, uh, late, lately, uh, the 21 uh, different uh, uh, disabilities which are uh, included uh, has the acid attack also. Even the families who comes from such disturbed people uh, families are also equally uh, disturbed and so we do have a diverse uh, students diverse learners whenever we talk about a diverse classroom that includes all of them right so the flexibility here allows to accommodate this wide range of learners here and udl encourages teachers to present information in multiple ways this is what we when we talk about the udl it includes multiple ways such as uh, we can uh, the vakt approach that we all have uh, studied during our ba uh, uh, training like the visual the auditory and hands on methods and what not right so it encourages multiple means of action and expression that gives us that liberty that uh, freedom whether through writing or speaking or creating art or using any technology, we can go for any, whatever we feel that the student uh, has that requirement, we can uh, incorporate that. So it encourages multiple means that uh, I have already discussed with you. And the UDL also helps keep all students engaged, particularly those who might struggle with traditional uh, instructional methods, because now they can find something interesting for them, something doable for them now because now we or we also have you know bifurcated and we also have um, distributed our way of teaching and we have incorporated multiple methods so that at least somewhere the child will fit himself or herself somewhere to uh, to uh, learn the concept concept which is being taught in the classroom then comes the collaborative teaching we all are doing this in our schools collaborating teaching is also known as the co-teaching wherein we basically the approach often you know pairs the general education teachers and the special education teacher in have any essential in the class we do discuss it with our special educators also and then we come back to our classroom we plan our lessons in that way and uh, so that we can better address the needs of all students in an inclusive classroom now comes the third uh, step the differentiated instructions Differentiated instructions like whether teachers differentiate in the content or the process or the product that ma'am has just explained about the content because differentiated instruction is all about the content, the process, the product that uh, talks about the assessment, different types of assessment that we can incorporate within our lessons. And the learning environment, of course, is an important factor when we talk about differentiated instruction. 
so it all whatever is the step whatever is the process that we incorporate in differentiated instruction the aim is to maximize each student's growth and individual success by meeting each student where they are and helping them progress like we are just understanding the current level the current um, performance level of the child and then we plan our uh, strategies we plan our lessons in such a way that the child should at least feel somewhere 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 at some point of time the child will feel valued and will feel that yes i have learned at least i have walked this much distance so that is ultimately in order to meet and in order to meet the learning outcomes that we are expecting from the child that is all about the uh, that talks about the differential instructions we are aiming at and uh, it focuses mainly on the personalized instruction flexibility of course if the child if a different learner we are uh, handling a different type of learner we will um, definitely incorporate some of the strategies that will suit that child and that will help that child right so enhanced engagement is also there because now the child has found something doable for him in the classroom and uh, we can then say that ultimately the engagement level of the students have been increased due to all these alterations or the modifications that we are doing or bringing in our lesson plan then here um, again here i would like to highlight that the universal design of learning the udl that i talked about and the differentiated instruction di both appears to be the same right the only difference is that udl is little proactive in approach that in was designing curriculum and learning environments from the outset to be accessible and effective for all because it's like a broader term like we say syllabus syllabus is a broader term and when we come and teach our lessons in the classroom that that is little responsive in nature so when we are designing something broader it is the udl and when we are coming down to our classroom and uh, planning some lessons for our students that again based on the interest and uh, interest and the ability of the child we differentiate our instruction and wherein the differentiated instruction that comes at a responsive level um, so this is the broader i would say the broader difference i'm talking about between the udl and the differentiated instruction since they all both are sound to be the similar thing so the focus is on providing multiple means of engagement representation action and expression to ensure all students can access and participate in learning this i'm talking about the differential instruction so in differential instruction has responsive approach unlike universal design of learning that has the proactive approach we are designing something for the entire school or i would say yes every classroom can have this or that that is the universal design for learning but when we are coming down to our classroom each teacher is going to with her lesson plan in the classroom so she designs something okay i I'll, i'll talk or i'll give this example to that child or i am going to give this activity to a different child so here we are differentiating our instruction this is the only difference between the universal design for learning and the differentiated instruction otherwise more or less the aim of both the strategies is coming down to be the same to improve the enhancement to uh, engagement of the child and to improve the uh, learning outcome so um, we have seen that it is responsive in approach that involves adjusting teaching practices and materials in response to the diverse abilities based on the interest based on the learning different uh, learning styles of the students and the focus is mainly on modifying the content where in differentiated instruction so the pro content process product all are the different stages of differential instruction and they meet the specific needs of the individual students or groups of students hence udl collaborative teaching and differential instructions are the most effective strategies when we are talking about uh, uh, about any inclusive classrooms that we can always you know keep catch hold of all these strategies and uh, then i don't think we are going to face any more challenges of course still there will be but we have already talked that every challenge has associated opportunities that we need to identify and grab it there and then and so as to you know reach out so this is all about the strategies of inclusive classrooms yes ma'am 
Okay, the next uh, educational approach is of ours is the differentiated learning, uh, which involves tailoring instructions to meet the diverse uh, needs or an interest and learning styles of the individual student, rather than adopting a one size fit all strategies like we have talked. Uh, a differentiated learning recognizes the students having varying backgrounds and abilities and thus instructional method and uh, resources and assessments should be adapted accordingly uh, in this differentiated learning. The goal of differentiated learning is to provide all students with the appropriate level of challenge and support uh, to maximum the, maximize their learning uh, potential. So this is the main goal of the differentiated learning. Okay, now let's understand learning diversity. Here, students' readiness that students come into the classroom with different skill levels and differentiation helps teacher address their diversity by assessing where each student in, in the class is at, at their learning journey. So like a pre-assessment. By assessing, uh, teachers can provide the content that is appropriately challenging for each learner. This means offering more advanced material for those who are ready to move ahead and additional support for those uh, who need it. This approach uh, ensures that every student is able to make progress and uh, progress and uh, achieve their potential. Learning profile, which we all are doing, students uh, have different ways of learning. Some learns through auditory, some learns through uh, visuals, some eye kinesthetic learners. So different learners, uh, we, these are there for different learners. So differentiating differentiation allow teachers to present information in multiple ways to cater their diverse needs and learning preferences by using a mix of auditory, visual, and hand-on teaching uh, method. Teachers can help each student to learn in the way that suits them best, leading to more effective and enjoyable learning experience. And student interest also matter the most, uttermost, where teacher connects students uh, to learning interest. They can significantly boost uh, engagement and motivation. And uh, differentiated instruction allowed uh, allow each teacher to incorporate topics and activities that uh, resonate with the students, making learning more relevant and exciting. When students are uh, interested in what they are learning, when we see the students that are learning and they are interested in the topic, what teachers are teaching them, they are more likely to get engaged and motivated. And which we also feel sometimes, ki, ha, yes, th this is going, doing well, which can lead to a deeper understanding of the material. So by uh, recognizing and, and addressing the diverse uh, skills levels of the learners' preferences and interest of the student, differentiated instructions connect uh, and create a more inclusive and effective learning environment. This approach not only uh, helps students to learn better, but also makes the classroom more dynamic and supportive place for everyone. All right, the principle of differentiated instruction is based on the idea that teachers should adapt their teaching methods to meet the diverse needs, interests, mm -hmm. abilities, and learning styles of their students. This approach recognizes that students are not all the same. And like ma'am just said, that a size fits all method of instruction is not effective at all. So differentiated instructions that I just uh, described a minute before uh, aims to provide each student with a learning experience that maximizes their potential by incorporating different styles and different ways of uh, uh, activities, different uh, so uh, that are the these all are the principles of differentiated instructions that we are talking about content as we all go into our classroom with some content we do have a content to deliver in our classroom 
right so what can we make how can we make the change like content of course we, everyone has the content but uh, we can have a variety in the material when we are coming when we are entering a classroom we can have a variety in our material like you know uh, presenting information in multiple formats like we can use textbook for some child children we can even show the videos to some of the students who are the visual learners we can give some articles to read to some other set of students and hands on act we can plan some hands on activity to certain people who like learning by doing and to cater to different learning preferences which are there right so we can do comp we can even do complexity adjustment in within the classroom like uh, like advanced learners may explore or even go in deeper uh to uh, or great, greater depth you know to understand that particular topic if we feel that this particular child has already graduated the this content which i have taken into the classroom we can ask the child we can give the topic in such a way that he has we, we will have to you know dive great uh, deeper in the uh, depth and while those who need little support in the classroom we can just work on the foundational skill of the content which we have taken to the classroom so this is the content level differentiated instruction then we when we come to the process which deals with the strategy that can be incorporated within our lessons so there what we can do we can uh we can do flexible grouping there based on there again we have already every teacher when she enters in the classroom she understands she also is quite well versed with the students which are there in the classroom who are there in the classroom and uh, we understand what are the special interest of uh, so and so child and what are how the child learns so we according based on their ability interest and learning style we can uh, do the flexible grouping to allow for targeted instruction and the collaborative learning we can enhance there and we can even provide a range of activity that engage students in different ways such as like we can incorporate some sort of discussions or short discussion in the classroom we can even uh, motivate students to do some experiments in the classroom or independent research work we can give to someone who is more into like i have i already know this much what extra is there for that uh, child who is either we can say gifted or little more has uh, level um, up of that standard so what we can plan we can give a research work to that child on the same topic so our content will remain the same but the variety will be there when we are going into a classroom then comes our third step that is the product and which basically deals with the assessment that we do continuously within our classroom we can we do a formative assessment we also come uh, finally to the summative assessment also so product deals with the assessment wherein we can incorporate choice in assignments during the formative assignments formative assessment when we conduct we can give choice in those assignments thereby allowing students to demonstrate their understanding in different ways some can write a essay on the topic some can uh, give a presentation on it some uh, a set of students can prepare projects based on the performance so all how can we divide the entire class into different activities is again based on their strength and interest right so the tired assignment we give a term to this assignment tired assignment can be given that the appropriately challenged for different level of learners so like the basic the foundational learner will be given a little less challenging as but the, the again the content will be equally challenge, challenging for that learner because since the level is different so they will feel the challenge to be of the same level right so difficulty level for each learner will be different as per their interest and the ability but tired assignment can be designed for the students right then comes the learning environment then when we talk about the differentiated instruction we are more concerned about the learning environment that is of course is the adaptable classroom setup we are talking about arranging the physical space to support a variety of learning activities such as we can even design some quiet areas some isolated areas wherein some of the students who do not like any noise or interaction in between especially when we talk about the children with autism they prefer to do the things alone they do it better when they get a isolated uh, position so in order although we the aim is not to isolate that child from the entire class the aim is to get that assignment done so during that uh, assignment we can of course provide a quiet space to that child in order to get that assignment done and uh, 
even the group areas can be made in order to give the collaborative task to the students and this will foster a positive climate within the classroom uh, because an inclusivity and a supportive classroom culture will be there where all students will feel safe and valued even the one who, to whom we are uh, isolating from the entire class will also feel valued because that is the interest that is the requirement of that child to be uh, made sit at a quieter place to complete his task during that um, period so again in uh, integrating students interest into lessons to increase engagement engagement and the motivation will always be our focus um, when we are going into an inclusive classroom we can provide choice board also providing option for students to choose from allowing them to pursue topics and interest uh, by meeting the uh, when we design some uh, some of our lessons we are more focused to meet our learning objectives or the outcomes so choice boards can also be given to these students in order to get the assignment done again the readiness is very important whenever we are uh, assigning or whenever we are planning some assignment for our students the readiness and what is readiness readiness is basically the kyc know your child whenever you are going to uh, your classroom you should know your child you should know their interests you should know their level of performance their current level what are the challenges the child is facing that of course we all uh, teachers have that now instinct that whenever we go and we just take a class and we are uh, good to know about all the students at what level a particular child is performing or how the child is uh, whether the child has understood the concept or not that we all get to know within one or two classroom at least if two i am i saying is like because if we consider to the strength of course of the class then it will take hardly two or three periods in order to know the child better about the interest about the level about the challenges that the child is facing in learning so readiness is something that we need to understand uh, about the learning of any child so pre assessment using assessment to gauge students current knowledge and skills before beginning a unit or lesson is required uh, during the um, new session of course we try to understand every child before starting our up our syllabus with and ongoing assessment is of course they are continuously assessing students progress and adjusting instruction as needed to ensure that every uh, each uh, student is appropriately challenged as per the level and the interest and supported is our main goal and then comes the a uh, learning profile understanding learning styles the kyc that we have already done the vakt approach we are already incorporating in our lessons so recognizing that students have different learning styles and incorporating strategies based on their own learning style um, addresses these differences in a classroom and personalized learning plans are there for those to whom we feel that they need specialized uh, instruction we of course plan individualized plans for them we also contact our special educators we contact our uh, social workers in the psychologists who are there in the school to in order to make a good plan for such students in the classroom and by implementing all these principles which are uh, we have already talked about teachers can create a more dynamic and responsive learning environment that meets the diverse needs of all students helping them to achieve their full potential now let's see the differentiated lesson plan how is done here are the step by step book, guide to help each teacher to design a differentiated lesson plan as tulsi ma'am told you should know your student so conduct a pre assessment by understanding students current knowledge and their skill level then identify their style learning style whether they are the visual learners or the tree and the learners among them or they need extra help learning preferences then their interest also you have to consider learn about students interest to make lesson more engaging student profile also language proficiency level special needs if they required their cultural background which is also part of it and the goal which you are setting for your student should be very much clear uh, specific learning outcomes should be there which uh, will be aligned to your curriculum standard uh, to ensure it should ensure that your student succeed in the outcomes which you want to achieve them 
and there should be multiple uh, uh, formats for them to, like uh, for using them like you can use videos as we have talk hands on activity according to their different uh, styles of learning now uh, plan your uh, your uh, lesson plan according to the flexible grouping based on their abilities interest and learning style groups can be uh, homogeneous they can be heterogeneous dep depending on your activity and uh, incorporate a mix of activities such as direct instruction can be taken collaborative work can be taken independent study or experiential learning allow student to show their learning through different formats such as writ write, written reports uh, or uh, presentation or doing a project work or their creative expression and the rubric also the main most important thing for all our uh, as a teacher is should be very clear and uh, in, and also ensure that there these rubrics are fair for the assessment okay so and the atmosphere also is very important there should be a positive atmosphere and the arrangement of the classroom should be such uh, for the learning activity which there should be a lot of space provided for individual study and quiet uh, reflections also so and uh, regular feedback should be taken for as a teacher we should regularly take a feedback so that for the next lesson plan when we are planning we should be more thorough okay, we have to incorporate this in our lesson plan so your lesson plan should be more um, both summative and format uh, for summative and uh, formative one and uh, i'll give you one example of a lesson plan which i have taken over here is understanding and using different tenses so my objective is by the end of this lesson student will be able to identify use and differentiate between past present future tense in a sentence so the activity which we can plan for the student in the starting of the class is briefly explain the concept of tenses using a timeline diagram discuss real life scenarios where different tenses are used like talking about the past even describing current situation action plan for the future teach the rules you have to teach the rules and structures of the present past and future tenses with example uh, you can show them videos also for explanation and animation also works very well with examples then you can form a group like you can form three groups uh, the basic one the uh, you can use the tenses where sorting of uh, cards can be used in the past tense present tense and future form then there can be a short writing a short paragraph describing your daily routine past event or your future plans and the third group can uh, which will be the advanced one they can write or create a uh, perform a, a short skit they can write dialogues using different tenses on them okay after assigning this uh, work uh, lesson you can give them a differentiated worksheet according to the learning style of the each student uh, and it should be a exercises should be a tailored one to each group uh, readiness level again choice of activity should be given writing they can write short stories create a comic strips or compose a poem according to the uh, ten various tenses they can want uh, and then again you have to collect the feedback provide immediate feedback or group activities and independent practices so this is the example which demonstrate how the differentiated lesson plan can address the diverse need interest and ability of the student making grammar lesson more effective and engaging tulsi so, ma'am unmute yes. implementing differentiated strategies in the classroom i think i have already discussed all this but then i'll just short uh, take them briefly flexible grouping i have already talked about that based on the specific interests and the learning profiles for example if a teacher might group students who need more practice with a concept then together for additional support while those you can you know uh, give more practice with the concept uh, together for the additional support and while those who have ma already mastered the concept then might work on the extension activities we should always plan uh, an extension activity while 
uh, when we enter into our classroom we should plan like if your foundational learner will do this much the minimum level of learning and if there is any child who has already understood the concept we must have some or the other uh, extension activities for such students so that the classroom will not be disturbed because if we do not have anything for such students they will obviously disturb the class and will not uh, let the uh learning go in the class and even uh, if he already has graduated that concept we must have some uh, extension activities for uh, such students in the classroom then tired assignment again uh, i have uh, talked about it uh, at length in the in my previous slides and uh, like for instance in a reading lesson when some students might work on identifying the main idea in a straight forward text right he will just read and he will just identify what is the main idea of this text which you are reading we can simply ask the students uh, about it while others might analyze the character development in more complex novels which are there we can ask the child to uh, draw a character sketch of uh, the character which are there involved in the novel and so by varying the difficulty of the task teachers can challenge all students appropriately right based on again their level the performance level helping them to grow and succeed without feeling overwhelmed or unchallenged because if a child will feel that this is not challenging for him or her then obviously the classroom will then land up into a noisy place and choice boards as we have already talked about that we must have some choice board uh, suppose for a history lesson uh, we can uh, include options such as writing an essay on the given topic or creating a timeline if we, if someone is uh, has already written the essay you can give uh, to create a timeline conducting an interview then designing a poster or some of these strategies that we can include within our classroom for the choice but uh, meaning thereby is just to provide choices to the students if we have only one fixed question do this or that obviously some of the students will do that happens in our classroom and rest of the others who are not interested in that particular choice will not be give, giving you any response only they will just submit you the notebook on that to even on uh, giving so many reminders in the classroom so uh, every child must have uh, uh, to be challenged appropriately as per the level right so these are the certain things that we are talking about choice board should be given then learning stations we can frame learning stations uh, designated areas that i have talked about based on their learning style and preferences like if one anyone wants to do it in isolation that can he can be made he or she can be made to sit alone in one corner and if any uh, people a set of students are there who want to do it in collaboration can made to sit on another corner likewise so different learning stations can be made to set up encourage active hands on learning and ensures that students can approach the material in diverse and engaging ways so that is our ultimate aim when we are going into a classroom that student should be engaged the classroom should be disciplined classroom management should be there i think all will come together if we are planning our lesson in that efficient manner so by implementing these differentiated strategies flexible grouping tiered assignments then we talked about the choice boards we are talking about the learning stations so teacher can create a more personalized and effective lesson plans and learning environment and this method ensures that all students unique needs interest abilities levels uh, are leading to enhanced engagement understanding and academic success that is our requirement that is our ultimate goal when we are entering any classroom right so um, coming to the next slide now excuse um, me ma'am sorry to sorry. disturb you ma'am ma'am it's already more than 1 hour to the workshop we are just if we can wind it up a bit quickly yes ma'am thank you so now when uh, how do we end up our any lesson how do we end up we end up by measuring the impact of differentiated instructions right so um how will we measure the impact of differentiated instruction that we have designed for our classroom is by uh, noticing the increased student engagement i'm sure the way we have just uh, studied from the morning right morning what are the different strategies how can we differentiate instructions in the classroom how can we know the kyc of our other if we are incorporating all these things into our lesson plans definitely we are going to see all these changes in our 
classroom mm-hmm. the increased student engagement the higher academic uh, achievements then improved social emotional skills and the enhanced uh, um, uh, performance of the child these all are um, we are definitely going to witness in our classroom enhance equity and inclusion that is the ultimate goal and so by measuring increased student engagement and all these things these indicators help teachers understand how well their strategies are working and ensure that all students are receiving the support they need to uh, uh, understand when they are there when they are coming to the classroom so as we conclude this workshop now this is the end of our uh, session i know it's very abrupt but then as we conclude this workshop i am filled with immense gratitude and appreciation first and foremost i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to mr ak sharma ario uh, who uh, meticulously is who's planning and dedication in making uh, this event a success and your efforts have provided us with the platform to learn share and grow together sir and i also extend my gratitude to ms prerna who has very efficiently coordinated this training session thank you ma'am and to all the participants your enthusiasm your engagement and willingness to contribute have truly enriched our experience your active involvement have made this workshop dynamic and inspiring thank you all for your time energy and commitment let us carry forward the knowledge and connections we have made here today applying them to our work together we can make a meaningful impact thank you once again everyone thank you so much ma'am thank you tulsi ma'am thank you mona ma'am for bringing about this concept of inclusive education and differentiated learning i think now the days are not like earlier we used to have one size fits all now gone are those days ma'am thank you for bringing forth this very significant concept may i now request dipika tiwari ma'am from bhavan panchkula to propose a formal word of thanks to our resource persons thank you prada ma'am नमस्ते डॉक्टर अनिल शर्मा सर रीजनल एजुकेशन ऑफिसर भारतीय विद्या भवन न्यू डेली आई एस्टीम स्पीकर्स मिस मोना जैन पाकर्स एंड मिस तुलसी फॉर अ स्पेशल एजुकेटर्स वी वी टी मेहता विद्यालय एंड एवरी वन अटेंडिंग द क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट एंड फॉरमोस्ट आई वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्रेस माई हार्ट ऑफ जाती थी डॉक्टर अनिल शर्मा सर हू ऑलवेज बी अ ग्रेट गाइड एंड अ मोटिवेटर एंड लाइक मी अस विद हिज वैल्यूएबल नॉलेज एंड एक्सपीरियंस प्रोवाइडिंग सच अ ग्रेट प्लेटफॉर्म which enriches us with new ideas making teaching learning process practical next i would like to convey my sincere thanks to our esteemed speakers for sharing their valuable insight and expertise on inclusive education and differentiated learning truly said ma'am inclusive education aims to provide equitable environment where all students get the equal chance to show they you know showcase their equal capabilities like they gain the education with a unique capabilities and we would rather emphasize more on competency based learning rather than content based learning now i acknowledge this prayer and this simple for their commendable efforts behind the scenes again to make this event successful last but not the least thanks to all participants for their enormous cooperation finally I end up with this inspiring quote by Robert John Mien, which says, "The most valuable resource that all teachers have is each other. Without collaboration, our growth is limited to our own perspectives. Yes, together we all can make it. We all can do it. So thanks once again. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you." thank you thank you dipika ma'am yes together we can and we are making a lot of changes in our mindset scenarios and our understanding thank you so much thank you the resource persons for session 1 before we close with the proceedings of the day let us join our hands to pray to the almighty
शांती रोषधाय हो शांती वनस्पतय शांती शांतिर्विश्वेदेव शांति ब्रह्म शांति सर्व शांति शांति देव शांति सा शांति 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 शांति